why is it that AI can succeed where academic philosophy and psychology and neuroscience did not? Right? We have sometimes dismissed that AI is very much inspired by results from neuroscience, but this, if you look closely, it's not true. One of the most important results, of course, was happy and learning that has influenced a lot of work. Uh, and the way neurons look has some uh, superficial similarity to neural networks, but none of the mechanisms that uh, AI researchers have come up with and that work today have been discovered by neuroscientists first. And if you take a connectome even of C. elegans or of Drosophila and try to run it in a simulation, it's not going to work. And so there is at the moment no working model of a nervous system existing in neuroscience. And uh, the gaps that exist there are in large part also difficult to fill because there is no way to build theories in neuroscience that work in the same way as they do in computer science. The neuroscientist Conrad Cording has written a paper about whether neuroscientists could understand the microprocessor, basically simulated. Imagine you use neuroscientific methodology to reverse engineer it. Could we understand how it works? And it's, so at this point, this methodology is not suitable yet to do it even for such a simple, simple thing like a known microprocessor. And AI, computer science, has a very interesting advantage that many other disciplines have not. We can build testable models with many, many variables and see if they produce a certain performance. And that's a criterion that doesn't exist in uh, psychology, for instance. So it's much harder for psychologists with their current methodology and perspective on positive science to build theories of the mind. And if we want to build theories that we can test, we need ways in which we can test them. And at this point, it's building intelligent agents if you want to understand intelligent agency.